so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista Neze. <laughs> and this is Nezaville. guys if i had a good singing voice i probably would have sang merry christmas to you guys i'm in such a jolly and happy mood today considering the fact that the year is fast coming to an end and it is that time once again for so many people to self-reflect self-appraise and analyze their progress and their journey throughout the year. In today's video, we're going to be discussing six major stories that trended in 2023 that I covered and very strong, powerful life lessons that I have learned from them. And I would also want you to learn from them. So as I proceed with this video, please let me know also from your own end, which of these stories shocked you, touched you, you learned from, made you cry, which story was it for you? Where you took the biggest life lessons in 2023. The first story that we're going to be taking life lessons from in 2023 is the story of Mr. Ibu and the importance of setting boundaries. This episode is by no means condemning or criticizing anybody or their life choices, okay? As I mentioned earlier, it is what I learned, the lesson that I chose to learn from the incident. So yes, we covered and we know of Mr. Ibu's story, how he has been married severally and gotten divorced severally, and how aside from the children that came from those marriages, he also had other children from other women who were not his wives. You see, that story taught me that there are consequences for every action. Sometimes you hear some people say, oh yes, I can do this. You hear some men say, oh, if the wife is messing up, I can have another child here. I can have I'm a man, I can have another child here. Yes, nobody is stopping you, you can. But you have to factor the fact that that behavior also comes with its own consequences. For every action that we take, there are always consequences for it. So we saw the case of how Mr. Ibu's family came out to social media and you know, the whole fracas, the son was here saying from one side of his mouth, the wife was here fighting, the alleged adopted daughter was on the other side and it was such a mess. I gave my opinion in that video and I said, Mr. Ibu has a majority of the blame to take because he is the priest of that household. He is the head of that home. So many people confuse the meaning of head of a home. Head of a home does not only mean a boss or a lord. It means that person that will set the home, put the home together, unify the entities of that home, set a good example in that home, set boundaries of respect in that home, that even in his absence, the structure that he has set in his lifetime would run and ensure that there is peaceful and smooth existence in that family. And we saw that lacking, unfortunately. Now, Mr. Ibu is alive. He only had a medical emergency or a medical need. And we saw the whole confusion on social media. So you can just sit for a second to imagine if it was death, the kind of calamity that may have been left behind him. We have seen this play out. We have seen it play out in movies, in real life, in courts. I've seen it severally. So while we are making decisions and thinking that, oh yes, I'm a man. I can have children with any woman. I can be polygamous in nature. You have to know that there are consequences for having children everywhere with multiple women. You do not expect calmness and oneness and unity and peace. You cannot have your bread buttered on both sides, as I always say. So if it's your choice, continue in irresponsible behavior, but know that in future, the report card would always be played. So I kind of believe that God gave Mr. Ibu another chance to fix his home. Thank God it wasn't dead. He was amputated twice and he is alive to see <laughs> the bad blood in his family. So that was a lesson for me, not even just as per polygamy and promiscuity, even as a mom, the way you raise your children. Are you sowing seed of discord and enmity between siblings? Are you stemming up unnecessary rivalry? It always comes back 
to bite us in the butts sooner or later. The next trending story that was covered on my channel in 2023 that, you know, came with plenty of lessons is the story of Noella and Tichidi. <laughs> I would keep calling him Tichidi until he explains why he put that T in front of his Chidi. <laughs> why not Chidi straight up? Don't mind me. So, yes, we all know the story of how Chidi was previously married to Sophia, the mother of his three sons, and out of the blues, he asked her to leave. I think he was the one that, you know, had issues with her. She wanted the marriage, she wanted her husband, but I don't know whether he was being bamboozled by another woman. I don't know whether he was just tired of the marriage, but whatever it was, we saw Noella quickly replace Sophia, the mother of the man's children, and she was all over social media, you know, doing the whole lovey lovey thing. You know, I hate to admit how very desperate women are for marriage. Very desperate. In fact, many of the sad stories that I covered on my channel this year that left women either battered or wounded or even killed, they were signs at the beginning. There are always signs why you shouldn't be in that marriage, why you shouldn't get in that relationship, why you shouldn't be with that man, why you should ask more questions and do more research and run away. But somehow, women, it's like that's like the only thing that society has taught us will validate us. So you see women going into marriages that they are not supposed to go into. And just as the saying goes, you cannot build your joy on the foundation of another person's tears. We have to be very mindful of who we hurt just because we are trying to attain a social status. Whether you are a man or woman, do not be in a hurry to jump into a marriage with someone when all that person does is badmouth their ex, that person has been married one, two, three times. The divorce with the previous spouse has not even been concluded. You are seeing all the toxic traits, but you still just want to answer misses. You still just want to get married by all means. Most times it ends up badly. Even with the Olakunle Churchill thing, I do hope that those rumors are false. I do hope that they are still happily married. But thinking about the possibility alone is frightening because that was another case where a wife said that this woman is disrupting my home. This woman is coming between my husband and I. This woman is a problem. She's a threat. She's a challenge. I am by no means exculpating the man from liability. He is just as guilty or even more guilty. But what I'm saying is why must you be the one to cause another sister pain? We women need to be very careful of the kinds of relationship we get into, the kinds of marriages we get into just because we want to get married. The next story that has touched me and has taught me is the story of May Edoche and her husband. Yes, I will still call him her husband because yes, they are in court but the divorce has not been finalized. So her husband Yul and the death of their first son Kambilichko who passed some time in March of this year. You see, that whole story about that woman has taught me and I believe has taught a lot of women that when we are confronted with adversity, we have two choices. It's either we choose self-preservation or we choose self-destruction. And hard as it is, the choice is always in our hands. That story is like a perfect definition or example of making lemonade from the lemons that was thrown on you. In most of my videos, I would not state my opinion, but I am at liberty to learn a lesson or two from my stories because I really go deep into my stories. I do lots of research. You guys, I put a lot of effort into my stories. Sometimes I stay up all night watching interviews from way back. I start from the person's history, when he was born, where he was born, the studies. So I go way back. I go really deep in my stories to ensure that I bring you guys the truth with um, very minimal mistakes. There always will be mistakes. Once it's a human endeavor, even machines make mistakes, the purpose of human beings, right? But with minimal errors, sometimes I find myself invested in my stories and I always try to be dispassionate in my presentation. But as I internalize these stories and I relate with people's true life experiences, I still learn lessons from these stories. I don't just come and talk about it, I also pick lessons from them. And 
I'm not here to condemn whether anybody is entitled to polygamy or not. That is that person's cup of tea. But what I learned is sometimes life may not give you or hand out to you or pan out as you have planned. You need to have a tough skin. You need to have a shock absorber. Shock guinea absorber. Now that story was a story of a woman who started with a man right from when they were young. Teenagers. Together, building together, loving each other, confiding in each other. I'm sure if you had told that lady like three years ago that she would be where she is now, she would never have believed it. That her husband would be in the arms of another woman and her first son, her Diopala, would be dead. She would never have believed it. So, you know, when you lose a child, the grief, the pain is enormous but you know that one person that can help you through the pain apart from god it is that person's that child's parents your spouse because it was both of you that went through that journey from when that child was conceived to when you broke the news to him and how both of you jumped on each other and kissed and hugged each other expecting our first child to the shopping to this putting the child in school his first steps his first meal everything you guys live through it together so nobody can relate to your pain as much as that spouse that child's father but we saw what played out just about a week after that child died the father was nowhere to console the mother the father was on social media with the other woman and they were dancing and playing listen eh listen eh? as a human being that thing is capable of breaking anybody and you've lost the marriage You've lost your husband of you, the husband of your youth that you grew up together, intending to spend old age together, and then you now lost your diopala. Do you know what a first son is in the life of a woman who her husband is derailing? The woman automatically takes up that son as her husband. He becomes her husband. The only thing is that they will not <laughs> they will not go to bed. But every other thing, confiding in, advice. Everything she would depend on that boy to stand in the place of a man. It's just like a widowed woman. Her first son becomes her husband. So you can imagine a woman who went through the shock of finding out that the husband had a child and another wife a whole life on social media, grappling with that shock only for her to lose her backbone. That is enough to send any woman to rock bottom. But we saw the way that lady handled it. She's not even coming to social media to bash anybody. She's not coming to insult anybody. She picked up the pieces of her life and she started doing well for herself. She didn't let it break her. There would be days of tears. She would go to her closet, she would cry. She would miss her marriage. She would miss her child. She would miss the, the way things were. But she knows that she has no option but to be strong. And that should apply to you and I. Because life can be somehow <laughs> life can just throw at you what you never anticipated we should never opt for self-destruction we should encourage ourselves no matter how hard it is and stand up from the ashes rise from the rumbles and keep pushing that story of me and you is very motivating and it's one of the stories that i got a lesson from in 2023 so yes me and you and the power of self preservation then the next story that um, impacted on me or i learned from is the story of timothy adegoke the late timothy adegoke and dr raman so i'm going to leave the link to um these stories that i covered in the description box so you can watch they are all interesting stories and so many people enjoy them they have hundreds of thousands of views some of them so um timothy was a young man who used to live in abuja in his 30s an accountant and he was schooling at oau he traveled to Ileife to write his exam and unfortunately he was murdered by the owner of the hotel where he lodged not only was he murdered he was buried right in the hotel obviously for ritual purposes well dr raman the owner of the hotel has now been sentenced to die the case came to a conclusion this year with that sentence i know he would appeal the sentence but at least he has been convicted 
to die. So what I learned from Timothy's story is the power of oneness in marriage. Marriage is a very beautiful thing. It's one of the best things that can happen to anybody. I keep saying it. If you follow my personal channel, Nise Pepe Rempe, you would understand that I am such a marriage-driven person. I believe a lot in the institution of marriage. Forget that so many stories we covered on the channel showed marriage crashing and all of that. Yes, those are the kind of stories that get exploded in the media space. It's normal. But don't doubt me. There are so many beautiful, excellent, happy and exciting marriage free of domestic violence, infidelity, aggression and all of that. Beautiful marriage is being, being enjoyed. So what I'm trying to say on this story is, do you guys know that single piece that helped to unravel that case? It was the fact that that Timothy, the late Timothy, carried his wife along on every single step of the way. He never for one second left her in the dark. And that was why she knew the last place that he was before he got missing. Some men confuse accountability to control. They believe that if you are accountable to your spouse, to your wife, she is controlling you. Your friends will say, your wife, they control you. So some men, they don't carry their wives along. Their wives don't know about their monies in their accounts. Their wives don't know where they are going to, who they are going to see, the kind of businesses they are doing. Let me tell you something. I was a banker and I can tell you that the bank can never call your wife to say, hello, madam, your husband has 10 million naira in this account to come and take it. No bank will do that. So keep hiding. Accountability is part of marriage. You have to be responsible to someone. You know, there's this favorite Bible verse of African men, especially the abusers, people that abuse their spouse. Their favorite verse in the Bible, even those that are drunkards, gamblers, thieves, kidnappers, and robbers, the only Bible verse that they are very familiar with is, women, submit to your husband. Submit to your husband. And they have given different interpretations to this submission. Even those that expect you to endure domestic violence, they put it under submission. In fact, any ill behavior or toxic behavior ever that you can think of, put it into submission. But is that really what Christ meant? Why can't you carry your wife along? Your whereabouts, your activities, your finance. Why can't husband and wife carry themselves along and work as one? They forget that in that book that St. Paul wrote to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 21, it said, submitting to each other out of reverence for Christ. Why don't they quote that one? That's not be the same Bible in day. Why is it only one? Submit to me. Submitting to one another. This submission thing is not hard though. It's simply loving and respecting. It's simply respecting and having regard for each other. So just imagine if Timothy didn't have any regard for his wife. He was one of these men that believed that a woman should not control me. I don't have to report to a woman. I don't have to tell her where I am. I am the man. You grab your khaki, you zoom off. Your wife has no idea where you are. This man's mother would not have been unraveled. That story taught me the power of oneness, the power of accountability, the power of carrying your spouse along. It's very important. The next story that impressioned on me in the year 2023 is the story or was the story of the Chicken Republic boys and the detriments of ingratitude. Now we covered that story, those boys were security officers at an eatery and they were dancing on duty. Somehow the video got out and the boys claimed that Chicken Republic laid them off on account of that video. And the general overseer of a popular church in Portacourt, Omega Power Ministries, name of the church, OPM. His name is Pastor Chibuzo. He picked interest in the affairs of these boys and extended a hand of help to them. He said he was going to see them through school, which he did, process their passports, got them admission, their flight, everything. And they went to Cyprus to school. Somewhere along the line, I think he couldn't pay the school fees. 
and um, he, he was, um, I think he gave the excuse that exchange rates was affecting the church, it was affecting him and he didn't have as much as he used to have and these boys took to social media, oh my god, what didn't they say about the pastor? They insulted him, called him occultic, a ritualist, a pervert, a pedophile. It's a big lesson to everybody. Biting the fingers that fed you. you now, some people are only loyal to you to the extent at which you are relevant or you can provide to them. As soon as you stop being their provider, their redeemer, as soon as you stop being their benefactor, as soon as they cannot get from you again, they lose all love, all respect for you. Whatever you did, in fact, they feel entitled to continue enjoying your benevolence. He's not your father. He did for them what their parents couldn't do. And they didn't just come to social media to express, oh, our school fees has not been paid. If it was just that, it might be tolerable to say maybe they were creating awareness for people to help them. They went ahead to start defaming the pastor and assassinating his character. That he wants to use their destiny. He's a destiny thief. He's a destiny killer. Anybody he helps do not amount to anything. Why? It will surprise you that a lot of human beings are like that in the small capacity that they operate. Even if you fall out with somebody that you shared a relationship with, somebody that was kind to you, someone that helped you at a time of need, it is your responsibility to preserve that relationship. Because at some point, that person was your helper. At some point, that person offered assistance to you. So you cannot rubbish that past event just because the future didn't pan out the way you wanted it. It's a big life lesson. A lot of people are guilty of this. And now, only a few days ago, one of the boys came to social media saying that the they were deported because they did this and that. They were deported, sent back to Nigeria. And with the second one, one of the boys, the Chicken Republic boys, is in an underground cell in Cyprus. He was detained. God knows what he did for them to detain him and release one person. I don't know whether we have the whole story there. But the truth of the matter is that he is being detained. He is in trouble. He needs help. So how would you get help when you have already demarcated your previous helpers? You are shooting yourself in the leg. You are doing yourself injustice by coming out to condemn the person that helps you. Even if it's not in this capacity of social media, even within friends. That friend that you are gossiping to, condemning someone that helped you, that person is looking at you saying, ha, this person is a devil. So this person is saying this thing about this person and I know what that person has done for you. That person you are talking to, that you are supplying the gist to, is scared of you, will not even want to help you because she or he is seeing the way you are treating and talking about someone that has helped you in the past. So you are just devaluing and demarketing yourself by being an ingrate. Now these boys need help. Nobody wants to come to their aid because the world has seen how they handled a former helper so that story is very interesting it has so many life lessons let us retain the gratitude attitude long after the help stops coming and the last story the last lesson that we learned from one of our major stories on Nezerville in 2023 is the story of the recent story of Emeka Ike and his ex-wife Emma and the dangers of a faulty foundation. The dangers of implanting yourself in a family that doesn't love you or accept you. You see, Emma revealed in her interview that she had given Emeka and his family a list, okay, a bride price list, and they came on that day of the wedding without anything. So in other words, the bride price was not paid. The marriage lists, the marriage rights were not fulfilled. But they went ahead with the wedding anyways. You see, there are some things that we should compromise as women, as men, as human beings. But there are some things that are not negotiable, that should not be compromised. I know we are all work and we like to compare our situation to in America, they do it like this, in Germany, they you are not American and you are not German, you are African and we have our own values, we have our ethics, we have our traditions. No German is trying to tell her parents that but in Nigeria they do it like this. So why must you be such in a hurry to discard your own values and 
embrace the doctrines or the belief system of another people. They do not apply to you. In Germany, you might not even tell your parents, you might get married. Just wake up in the morning and say, I think we should get married today. You run to a, a priest or you run to a man of God, you bless the marriage and you tell your parents, Jack and I got married last summer. And they're like, oh, no ways. Oh my God. Mm -mm. It's different here. Don't compare your situation to that. You have different foundations. One of the biggest mistakes a woman would make is compromising on the foundation of a marriage. That marriage would certainly break. It's difficult for it not to collapse. Bringing the case of Tonto DK in too. Remember she told us that the husband didn't pay her bride price. She had to pay her bride price by herself. That is an abomination. That is a faulty foundation. Your parents don't approve your marriage. You damn them, you bullshit them. You go ahead and get married to the love of your life because he's shocking you. When that marriage begins to show you shaggy in future, that's when you realize that you need your family's backing. That discarding your family for marriage is not in your own interest. You come to a family, you say the family hates you with a passion. In Africa, we don't only marry the, the groom or the bride, we marry families. In Africa, marriage is a union between two families, not two people. That's the customary definition of marriage. So when you marry a man that the family hates you, you will continue to prove and prove yourself in that marriage and there is nothing you would do that would be okay or they will be happy with you. It will never be okay for them. All they'll be doing is to be criticizing. It is not worth it for me. It is not worth it. And when that man starts to show you shege in the marriage, <laughs> if that man shows you shege, God forbid, that's when you don't see that family that hates you will now rise up and join forces with him. But if the family loves you, you have the full backing of your in-laws. Your leg will stand strong. This maid, Doche, we're talking about, do you know how much worse it would have been for her if her in-laws were against her, if her in-laws hate her. But we see what her in-laws are doing. Her in-laws are even standing behind her, even more than their son. <laughs> Look at Auntie Wita Idoche. Always with her at events, standing with her. You like Doche's brothers, always with her. Commenting on her post, visiting her at her events, supporting her. That's why her mouth is still strong now. But just imagine if the whole house has scattered and her in-laws are now... Where will she start from? So it's not worth it getting married. Same thing happened to Emeka Ike and the wife. She said that she literally spent the whole marriage slaving for her husband's people, yet couldn't win their love or trust. It's a futile effort. So respect your traditions, respect your values, especially when it comes to getting into marriage. Do not compromise. If, the, if your traditions say pay bride price, pay the bride price. Do not act out of desperation. Think properly before you marry into a family that despises you. It never ends up well. Get your parents' blessings before you proceed. Do not let love shock you. Emma said after all the slaving she did for the family till today, 10 years after that marriage, none of Emeka Ike's siblings, all eight of them, called her or asked her what happened after all the slaving. <laughs> they never come around. So yes, guys, we have come to the end of today's video. As we wrap up the year, it is important to look back in retrospect and reflect on how these stories have touched us. So which of the stories did we cover in 2023 that got to you, that impacted you, that you learned from, that shocked you, that made you cry, that made you subscribe, that gladdened your hearts? that reformed your thoughts, that changed your perspective. Be it these ones I've mentioned or any other one, which of my stories was it for you in 2023? I want to say a very big thank you. Let me just seize this opportunity to say a very big thank you to all of you. The over 140,000 of you watching me, loving me, inspiring me, criticizing me, giving constructive feedback reaching out to me to share their stories, learning from me, contributing to me, commenting here, subscribing to me. I want to say a very big thank you for trusting me. 
last year we started last year with about 20,000 subscribers i remember when i did the video about hitting 30,000 that was already in like the third month or is it third or fourth month of last year so last year early last year we started with 20 something thousand and look at us we are inching to 150,000 subscribers with plenty of engagement. So it shows that you guys see something in me. You find me worthy to follow me, to watch me. You find me valuable and it is an honor that I do not take for granted. Thank you so much for sticking with me through the years. And I promise you that next year, we are going to be doing big things, bigger things with all of you by my side. Thank you so much once again for staying with me. I do love, love, love and appreciate you guys. Oh, look at this speech is getting emotional. <laughs> Let me call it a cut, direct or cut, 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 cut. So guys, we have come to the end of today's video. If you're new here, if you've seen my face for the first time, or if you've been watching me without subscribing, do not end the year. Oh, do not end the year without subscribing. Hit the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, drop all your comments as it did to you. Hey, get as it did to you, to you. <laughs> drop all your comments as it did to you down in the comment section and stay glued because we have so much more coming your way. It's me, your girl, Baristo Neze. And this is Nezaville. I'll see you guys in my next one for now. Bye.